Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm sure you know about the UN's climate summit that was held this week at their headquarters in New York City and the 400,000 people that marched there for a variety of environmental causes. Some were calling attention to rising tides with this slogan, Flood Wall Street, which I thought was interesting for other reasons. But what seemed sort of odd to me was the overt communist recruitment that was going on like these mass-produced signs saying fight for a socialist future and they were handling handing out these flyers like this one advertising a brooklyn socialist meeting on october 8th which i just happened to notice is the day of the lunar eclipse and the draconid meteor shower so apparently these communist signs were everywhere throughout that march and this person here said they were also at the climate summit in san francisco right here and this person claims the primary message of the people's climate rally was that climate change is caused by capitalism and it must be replaced by a new social and economic system entirely which was revealed to be communism at the rally i don't know if that's true because i wasn't there but it's clear to me at least that their statement right here is true that communist ideologies have moved to the forefront of the climate change movement so this irritates me because caring about the planet doesn't make a person a communist and being anti-communist doesn't make a person racist either as this sign seems to insinuate and i don't know much about political science but i'm pretty sure that recognizing problems with capitalism does not mean that a person automatically supports socialism either so to me, it seems that either this is an attempt to demonize the environmental movement or an attempt to use the environmental f movement to further the communist agenda. And the organization that produced these signs seems to be a big part of it. This one was in San Francisco and this one in New York. So it seems like a pretty widespread effort. So Kennedy must be rolling over in his grave right now because remember the long-term communist agenda written about in 1958 by an ex-FBI agent who Ronald Reagan said was the most qualified person to speak on the subject. His list of long-term communist goals were entered into the congressional record in 1963. And among those communist goals were permit free trade and aid to all nations regardless of communist affiliation admission of red china to the un promote the un as the only hope for mankind and demand that it be set up as a one world government with its own independent armed forces capture one or both of the u.s political parties get control of the schools infiltrate the press gain control of key positions in radio tv and motion pictures degrade all forms of artist artistic expression eliminate laws governing obscenity promote pornography and obscenity in books magazines motion pictures radio and tv present degeneracy and promiscuity as normal natural and healthy infiltrate the churches discredit the bible eliminate prayer and religious expression in the schools discredit the american constitution discredit the founding fathers belittle all forms of american culture give centralized control over education social agencies welfare programs mental health clinics etc infiltrate and control big business transfer some of the powers of arrest from the police to the social agencies dominate the psychiatric profession and use mental health laws as a means of gaining coercive control over those who oppose, oppose communist goals discredit the family as an institution encourage promiscuity emphasize the need to raise children away from the negative influence of parents and give the world court jurisdiction over nations and individuals alike so again this list was compiled by an fbi agent and entered into the congressional record in 1963 which was the same year kennedy was assassinated so some people might think that means nothing because the cold war is over and communism supposedly failed in russia but not according to russian defector and kgb informant yuri bezmenov According to him, in 1985 interview, the long-term communist agenda to take over America was going exactly according to plan. I have a video of excerpts of this interview and others given by other communist defectors that say the supposed dismantling of communism in Russia 
was a deception and part of a long-term plan. So I'll link the video in the description below, but I'm just going to play about five minutes of this part of the interview here because he explains the first of the four stages that the communist plan entailed. He called it demoralization. And then he says that first stage of the takeover was more than complete by 1985. So just listen to what he says here. Only about 15% of time, money, and manpower is spent on espionage as such. The other 85% is a slow process, which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, activne meropriyatia in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The result, the result you can see, most of the people who graduated in the 60s, dropouts or half-baked intellectuals, are now occupying the positions of power in the government, civil service, business, mass media, educational system. You are stuck with them. You cannot get rid of them. They are contaminated. They are programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. You cannot change their mind, even if you, if you expose them to authentic information, even if you prove that white is white and black is, uh, is black. You still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. In other words, these people, uh, uh, the process of demoralization is complete and irreversible. To get rid society of these people, you, have, you need another 20 or, or, or 15 years to educate a new generation of patriotically minded and, and, and uh, common, common sense people who would be acting in favor and in the interests of, of the uh, of, uh, United States society. And yet these people who have been programmed and, as you say, in place and yes. who are favorable to an opening with the Soviet concept, mm -hmm. these are the very people who would be marked for extermination in this country? Most of them, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, simply because the psychological shock when, when they will see in future what the, what the beautiful society of equality and social justice means in practice, obviously they will revolt. They, 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 will, uh, they, they will be very unhappy, frustrated people. And the Marxist-Leninist regime does not tolerate these people. Uh, they, obviously they will join the links of dissenters, mm -hmm. dissidents. Yeah. Uh, unlike in present United States, there will be no place for dissent in, in future Marxist-Leninist America. Uh, here you can, you can get uh, popular like uh, Daniel Ellsberg and filthy rich like Jane Fonda for being dissident, for criticizing your Pentagon. In future, these people will be simply squashed like cockroaches. Nobody is going to pay them nothing for their beautiful, noble ideas of equality. This they don't understand, and uh, it will be greatest shock for them, of course. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years, actually it's over-fulfilled, because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would, would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. 
uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. So throughout the whole interview, he said the communist goal was to take over America slowly over decades. And as you heard, he said the first stage demoralization was successful by the time of this interview in 1985. And I couldn't tell whether he said it had been going on for 25 years or 35 years. But if he said 35, then that means the communist planned phase of the demoralization of America began in 1950, five years after the bombing of Japan. So just bear with me for a second, because I know you might be thinking, what does Japan have to do with communism? So many people think Japan is democratic, but technically it's a constitutional monarchy. The prime minister is appointed by the emperor. And historically, they were always influenced by China, the mainland, for thousands upon thousands of years. And this is a map of the current governmental systems over the whole world. This is a legend right here if you want to read the whole thing. I'm just going to cut it short so we can see most of the map. The blue countries are presidential republics. The yellow are semi-presidential republics. The orange are parliamentary republics. Red are constitutional monarchies. The purple are absolute monarchies. And brown is basically communist, although they're apparently refraining from using that term. And then here's another map that shows all the countries that ever claimed to be socialist ever in their history. And it gives a number of years they were socialist. So you can see the northern country of Russia was socialist the longest, over 70 years. And China is right after them, between 60 and 70 years socialist, according to this map. And also here, it says the Communist Party of China founded in 1921 and by 1949, it defeated the standing government in a 10-year civil war leading to the establishment of the People's Republic of China. And then it says the Communist Party of China is the largest political party in the world. And I just wanted to point out the hammer and sickle right here. I think it's also the, the symbol that Russia uses. And this is actually in the biblical text. The biblical texts talk about the dragon that gives power to the world government and also the hammer and the thrusting in of the sickle at the time of that great war. So it's no wonder the communist agenda was to discredit the Bible because they probably want it outlawed because it identifies who they are and what their true agenda is. But we're not going to talk about that in this video. We're going to talk about ex-communist agents who have been saying for decades that the fall of communism in Russia was a deception. For example, in this 1984 book by an ex-KGB major, he predicted the collapse of communist Russia before it happened and said it would be a strategic deception. So apparently he claimed that beginning in about 1960, the Soviet Union embarked on a strategy of massive long-range strategic deception, which would span several decades and result in the destruction of Western capitalism and the erection of a communist world government, which he refers to as quote-unquote convergence. But... That kind of long-term deceptive strategy didn't actually begin in Russia. It began in China. So this is a 2,000-year-old book that originated in China. It's called The Art of War. And notice the author's name means Master Sun, which we'll talk about later. But this book was written by a Chinese high-ranking military general and was the most important military treatise in Asia for 2,000 years before it was translated into French by a Jesuit in 1772. And these are some of the quotes from the book. Quote, appear weak when you are strong. Break the enemy's resistance without fighting. Victorious warriors win first, then go to war. When we are able to attack, we must seem unable. When using our forces, we must appear inactive. When we are near, we must make the enemy believe we are far away. Pretend to be weak so the enemy will grow arrogant. Attack him where he is unprepared. Appear where you are not expected. Quote, he will win who prepared himself. Make waits to take the enemy unprepared. Engage people with what they expect. It settles them into predictable patterns of response occupying their minds while you wait for that extraordinary moment. 
that which they cannot anticipate. Okay, I have to stop part one right here. The link to part two is below.